this is David for Big Bits, and in this video we're going to take a look at how to take our strategy that we've built in this development series and kind of test it out with paper trading. And now if you're not familiar, paper trading is just simulated trading, uh, just noting your trades that you would have made in a journal and tracking the profit that you would have made. Now. Part of the good things about using paper trading is you get to see uh, not only uh, with the strategy tester and trading view how well the back testing did, but with paper trading you get to see how well you are actually executing that strategy. Now uh, a lot of times when people come up with a strategy they might uh, get emotional when the price changes, so tracking your trades that you would have actually made in a paper trading journal or like this tool in TradingView is a good way to see uh, just how well you might actually do when you do trade uh, with the strategy that you have. Now, I'm going to remove myself from the video so that we can see everything. All right, you can see now the strategy that we have on top of our ribbons that we've made. You can see we entered here, exited here with a profit or loss, entered here, exited, entered, exit. Okay. In the strategy tester, you can see the trades that it made, but what we're going to be doing in this video is we're actually going to be using the trading panel, uh, which you can see here on the bottom uh, part of the screen. And it gives you several options, and you can actually connect to different brokerages accounts, and uh, you can actually use this to actually trade with the order panel. Now we're not actually going to be doing that in this one, we're going to be using the paper trading. Uh, this is set up in TradingView as a broker so that they, it can track trades that aren't real. Now, the first thing you do after you set this up, it'll automatically create everything for you. You can see you have an account balance and equity. The first thing we're going to do, though, is we're actually going to click on our settings over here, and we are going to show the order panel. It kind of gives you an idea of what you're actually going to be working with when you do go to make orders. You can actually place limit orders. You can use a take profit and a stop loss when you place your orders. We're going to be doing market orders in this particular video just because they're very easy to work with and very easy to understand. Um, if you want more information on limit orders, I suggest you look at their documentation, but we'll take a brief look at it uh, kind of towards the end of the video. Now, now that we have our order panel pulled up to the right here, we're also going to reset our trading account. And the reason we're doing this, even though it's brand new, is because I want to change the balance. I don't really have $100,000 that I would be able to test with in real life. So let's actually change it to, uh, let's see, $8,000. It reset, and it's going to reset our account balance and our equity as well. So now we can have an even more realistic view of how we're going to be trading. Now, we also need to keep in mind, as you might have noticed from our last video, we need to keep in consideration the commission and fees. So we need to set up our commission settings. Uh, this entire series I've been uh, pretending we're using Coinbase Pro, and they have a 0.5% fee on buys and sells. So we're going to use that for our commission here. Now that we have that set up, we're going to start actually making an order. Like I said, we're going to be using market orders. Since we don't already have a position and you can't really short on Coinbase, uh, we're going to be using a buy order to open our position. So you can select which side you want to use. So if you already had a position open, you can click on the sell side and you can sell uh, through the order panel to close your positions. Now. We have selected the buy side, we have chosen a market order, and we can choose the quantity. Now this is the number of units that we're looking at. We are using uh, Bitcoin here on the daily chart. You can see the price right now is 7,410. And if we were to buy one of these, that would use most of our balance. But we are gonna use one. And we can go ahead and buy one now, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add a take profit and a stop loss. Now, with the take profit, this will place a limit order or execute a market order at the specified price that you set 
based on uh, the amount you set here. Now I recommend you set the actual price field here uh, because when you start fooling around with the percentages and dollar amounts that is based on your total equity I believe and it's to me it didn't seem to feel right. Uh, I would like to look at percentage per trade but uh, if you're working with a portfolio then it might be more important to measure on your entire equity so it might just be easier for you to go ahead and calculate the profit that you want to get and convert it into the price and set it that way let's just set an order here at 7500 for take profit let's set our stop loss at 7000 all right so now when i buy on our paper trading it won't actually execute an order but it will mark down that we bought at this particular price and it's also going to place a, a take profit order and we're going to see a stop loss and I'll show you that in just a moment so now we're going to hit the buy button ah and you can see zoom in a bit here this blue line is our position where we entered this red line, as you can see, is the take profit, and this one is the stop loss. You can see our position on the paper trading here. Uh, we have one, it's on the buy side, that's the average fill price, and this is where we're going to be taking profit at, this is where our stop loss is at, and this is the current profit. Now, we can also take a look at the orders and you can see how this worked. When we made our buy, it filled the buy order, but it also placed a stop and a limit order. And those will execute if they get triggered. Now, they may not get triggered. You may want your strategy to go ahead and close based on other reasons. So let's take a look at what we can do soon here. And I did want to also mention Let's see, where was it? On the trading journal, I believe? No. On the history here. Okay, so you can also see the commission that you paid based on the fees as well on the orders uh, in the order history here. So when you're doing your paper trading, it's also important to note your commission. So you'll, you'll want the price to move up $37. Uh, since you bought one Bitcoin in this example in order to at least break even on the fees that you paid on the original one but you also need to consider the commission on the sell order which is likely going to be about the same amount so you'll probably need somewhere in the order of $75 to break even on the trade and an increase on price so it's important to look at this to make sure that you know uh, where you're going to come in at in profit with your commission and it gives you an idea uh, with the uh, position screen here but I don't think it really accounts too much for the commission when you're looking at the profit here it says we're up 8.65 in profit but uh, I don't believe that considers the commission so just keep that in mind when you're doing your trading here now we have already entered our position. We don't really want to wait for this example for it to actually close the position with the take profit or the stop loss. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we had a, another part of our strategy trigger a sell. And you can see here we had an entry. It's really small, but there's a blue arrow. I'll try to move the cursor. There's a blue arrow here. And that shows where the entry on our position was and we're going to sell and you should see a red arrow as well come up let's click our sell side we have a quantity of one and what we're going to do is we're just going to sell that one we're not going short so we don't need to take a uh, set a take profit or a stop loss let's go ahead and sell that one excellent you can see we entered and exited on the same candle let's go to our orders and you can see we had our limit and our stop, this is where our take profit, the limit was. The stop uh, was also set as an order. You can tell they were both canceled. That's because we closed the entire position, which there was nothing left to take profit from or to stop the loss from, so it just canceled the orders. Instead, it filled here uh, at this particular price. You can tell the price actually increased by $9.00 and we had a profit based on uh, the price however you can tell our account balance actually went down considerably 
uh, by about what's that uh, sixty six dollars and that is because of the commission uh, just remember to keep in mind I told you it was gonna be about thirty seven dollars again when we sold in total it was about seventy four dollars we made uh, eight dollars in profit 74 minus 8 is 66 that's how much we had as a loss and you can see that reflected in the account balance so just keep that in mind again when you're looking at your current profit uh, that you also need to consider the commission as well now we might just go ahead and look at the limit orders here we have a little bit more time left in the video so when you're looking at limit orders you have a sell side and buy side just like you had uh, for the market orders uh, let's look at the buy side here now it's giving the option to set your ask at the current ask plus or minus uh, a certain amount so this amount this plus six that is actually based on the ticks or what they refer to here sometimes i believe is pips and it'll increase the price of the current ask by six uh, ticks and for Bitcoin right now in this particular chart it's 0 0.01 or one penny so if we were to set the ask six above the current ask you can see it went from 47 cents to 53 cents here now we can also set this to the current ask uh, we would be buying one Bitcoin here and we can also set our take profit as well and you'll notice the pips and this is also the tick so if you wanted to do this as well uh, you could replace using the price instead by using this and remember the dollar amounts and the percentage amounts I believe are based on the entire uh, equity of your trading account now also notice on the sell side they do the exact same thing except you can see the bids here you could go plus or minus the bids, uh, the current bid in the book. So if there's a large spread in the book and you want to beat, and if you want to sell, you want to get in before all the others, you can do bid minus one, and that will put you uh, just below the highest sell in the books. But you also have to keep in mind that might also execute immediately, and you might get different fees depending on the exchange that you're using. But that pretty much covers it all for now. We're going to go into some other things. I'm pretty sure we're going to start working on some other indicators. Now, one of the things I want to work on is specifically using other indicators. Let me pull myself back into the video here. And we're going to be using different indicators. I'm going to create some custom indicators. I'm going to show you some uh, other useful functions. But for the most part, I think the series has guided you into how to create your very first indicator and develop that into a very complicated or at least friendly uh, robust indicator with tons of features that are at your disposal now plenty of examples and if you need to you can always go back and look at the videos but we took you from a simple indicator to something much more robust and turned that into a strategy and we showed you how to execute that with the paper trading now going forward uh, we are going to be taking a look at different indicators and one of the things I'm really interested in showing you is uh, combining multiple indicators into one and to do that I believe we're going to use a scoring system we're going to take the indicators that we would like to use in a particular strategy we're going to add a scoring mechanism and we are going to trade based on the essentially a confidence level uh, that's what the scoring is um, the more points your strategy would create with the different indicators the more confident it would be in whichever direction uh, it should trade uh, we're also going to take a look at some other features that I've come up with and if you have any suggestions please leave a comment on the video and I'll take a look at all of those but uh, that's it for now thank you and have a good day and by the way, I forgot to mention, check out the profile on TradingView where I have all of the scripts for everything that we've done already. If this is the first video you're watching, then uh, you probably 
may not be aware that we have tons of other tutorials already out there and other indicators as well. So please check out my profile on TradingView. And if you like this video, please like the video. And of course, if you like these types of videos and want to see more in the future, please subscribe. It helps me a whole lot. So now I'm actually done. Thank you and have a good day.